The Tao of Self Confidence, Episode 531. Welcome to the Tao of Self Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She is a multi-award winning cake artist and the founder of Karen Leong Cake Design. And I'm really excited to have her on today to share her story with us on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Karen Leong. Karen, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to the listeners. Hi everyone, I'm Karen. It's so nice being here on your show. Thank you so much for inviting me over. And yeah, I'm the founder of Karen Leon Cake Design. And for about nine years now, I've been baking customized designer cakes. And as of right now, I conduct lots of workshops for upcoming professionals, enthusiasts, and kids. So I started cake decorating when I was about 11. So as the years went by, I started yeah, slowly picking up like small classes and then it slowly grew into something I wanted to do full time. So I had a diploma in cake decorating and pastry art. But about two years ago, I realized I had all these skills already. So I just wanted to see what I could make out of it. So I decided to go into it full time and I just kind of dropped everything else and yeah, kind of went full force into baking. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And it's crazy how you started it as a hobby, you know, when you were a kid and look where it can take you. So I think that's amazing. And Karen, what's your cultural background? Well, I'm Malaysian Chinese. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. And what'd be your favorite self-confidence quote? I don't really have a favorite quote. I think, yeah, it changes a lot from time to time. But something that has really stuck with me, I guess, ever since a very young age, because I've always read up on like self-help and things like that. And I came up to the realization that my life at the end of the day is in my hands. I can't really rely on the people around me or my environment and kind of like, you know, trust that to turn me into the person that I want to be. So wherever I want to go with life and whatever I want to achieve at the end of the day, it's in my hands. Yeah. To just mold and change fit into what I want to be. Thanks for sharing that great quote. And I totally agree, right? I mean, you have the power to change your destiny at any given moment. So I I love that quote that you mentioned. And in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? I think it's just the ability to be able to believe in yourself and your goals and your visions and your dreams and having the strength or the confidence to turn it into the reality of who you are and what you want to do. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that great definition. And Karen, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? Okay, so self-confidence, I think it's something that I managed to grasp at a pretty young age. But then before that, I guess it was a total 180. Like I was a very, very shy growing up. So being self-confident definitely wasn't part of who I am, who I was at all. Yeah, so I spent a lot of time just wanting to be self-confident because I felt like my peers at the time, you know, who were self-confident, they just had so much more opportunities and they could have so much more fun in life and, you know, they connected with people in a much better way. So I really wanted to change that. I really wanted to be self-confident enough to do what I want to do in this life and be the person I want to be. Thanks for sharing that. And what was that point in your life when you realized, you know, you do have the confidence to go out there and live the life that you want and, you know, do the things that you want, especially, you know, baking cakes and doing cake art. You know, I mean, it's not something that's typical, especially for an Asian woman to go out there and do, right? What was that aha moment? Yeah, I don't think I had a particular aha moment that just came to me instantly. It was a very slow development, I guess, but like, yeah, from a young child to wanting to actually change. And then at that time, I guess my parents were very, very supportive when I told them because we had a lot of heart to heart conversations. And I'll be like, I don't really like being this person. I feel like I could do so much more. I could be so much more. And my dad was like, hmm, do you want to sign up for like things like leadership camps and things like that? So I was like, OK, sure, I'll give it a shot, you know. 
And during those leadership camps, I think it really helped me get out of my shell because, you know, there'll be all those group work things and you'd have to present stuff and that kind of thing. And it really helped me interact with people better because I'd have to maybe, say, lead the group or I'd have to give a presentation or things like that. And those things were way out of my comfort zone. So it really helped when I was kind of forced to push out of it. And also at that time, um, I was about 15 or so. And the people around me, they always told me that, oh, okay, you're really tall for an Asian woman, especially here in Malaysia. So they're like, hmm, you, know, you should try out modeling too. Maybe that could actually turn into something and it's, you know, good pocket money and that kind of thing. So I was like, hmm, I don't mind. You know, at that point, I was also really insecure with the way I looked as well. So I was like, hmm, I, would, I think I would really like to be able to play with makeup because I came from a family that I guess my mom doesn't really use makeup and stuff. I've always wanted to try it out, but I never really had the confidence to do it because I was like, hmm, maybe she wouldn't feel that happy about it and that kind of thing. So if I tried out modeling, then I have like a good excuse to learn how to put it on and stuff like that. So that really, really helped because I also wore glasses and I managed to like exchange that for contacts and be able to experiment with makeup. I was really into, you know, typical pretty makeup and I also went into like, you know, more fantasy looking things or more special effects makeup. So that really helped me boost my self-confidence, I think. Being able to shape what I looked like and having full control of that was very nice. And to not worry about what my family, you know, kind of wanted to, yeah, had this, I guess, certain look that they wanted for me, but I could actually change that. That was very empowering for myself. Yeah, so I guess the... Aha moment came somewhere around this, the leadership camps and the, I, yeah, I read up a lot on self-help books as well and the makeup phase too. So when all those three just came together, I think that's when I had my aha moment and that's where I started. I really started my journey of self-confidence. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, it's great that, you know, you were able to go to a leadership camp at, at such a young age. I wish sometimes most of these schools that we go to teaches that, right, especially at a young age, instead of, you know, trying to force them to learn something that they're not going to use 20, 30 years from now. But, yeah. you know, like leadership is important and, you know, what it means to be successful and, you know, being persistent. Those are really important things that we can use in real life and you know doing the makeup is like your form of self-expression and creativity which is great and you know when we can have an outlet for that creative creativity it it gives us that capability to keep on going and you know asking ourselves what else can we do so because of those realizations what's your life been like now i guess for me currently i wouldn't say like self-confidence is really like something i think about almost every day because I guess almost anything that I want to put my mind to, I feel like I'm capable of doing it. And I'm capable of just walking out the door and being the best self I can be because, I don't know, I feel like I can just, you know, yeah, be that person that I want to be now. There's nothing really blocking my way yeah, in being that at all. So I think that's very, very nice, you know, knowing that you can just be your best self every day. Thanks for sharing that. And to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey of self-confidence. What would be that one tip you would give to her? I think it's just to listen to yourself and to ask yourself what is it that is standing in the way of you being self-confident and perhaps to just yeah have a really nice quiet session with yourself because when I was growing up and especially in my mid-teens I always had something called mirror talks and it's exactly what it sounds like it's just me speaking to myself in the mirror sometimes I just throw very difficult questions at myself and I'd force myself to answer it because I just give myself that space you know there'll be like no one else in the room except just me and myself and you just have to accept the uncomfortable things that would actually come out I guess from your own mouth and I think in order to actually get more self-confident you'll have to just find out the root cause of what's standing in your way of being self-confident so yeah the first step is just discovery and then you can actually work on it thanks for sharing those great tips and karen if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do or check out some of your cakes is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with yeah so you can find me on both um, instagram and facebook just look up karen leong cake design and you'll be able to find my cakes there Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Karen, you can also head on over to the TaoSelfConfidence.com and search for Karen's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I really just want to thank Karen today for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Karen. Thank you so much for this opportunity as well. It was 
a great pleasure speaking to you and all of the listeners here. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Not a problem. It was really great having you on the show. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Get your free self-talk tape for building self-confidence by visiting our website at thetowofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.